You're listening to The Journey Podcast. What role does integration play in personal growth and healing? Tune in today's thought-provoking discussion to find out more. This episode contains adult subject matter and some listeners may be triggered by this content. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Petra Brunbauer, and with decades of experience with sadness, pain, anxiety, and stress, I finally figured out how to leave all that behind. And this podcast shows you how to break free permanently so you can reclaim your sanity and find the self-esteem and energy to go after the life you desire. With real talk about mental health, holistic healing, and the tough journey of coming out the other end, this is The Journey Podcast. Welcome to today's episode. Have you ever had a profound experience that left you wondering, what now? Today, our guest sheds light on the critical process of integration, the often overlooked step in personal growth and healing journeys. We dive deep into strategies for processing transformative experiences and incorporating new insights into daily life. You'll learn about creating supportive environments for self-reflection, techniques for grounding after intense emotional work, and methods to turn powerful realizations into lasting change. Tune in to explore how proper integration can be the key to unlocking sustainable personal growth and well-being. Liz Schuler is a psychedelic integration specialist and yoga therapist who helps open-minded professionals heal from trauma, grow personally and professionally, and create a life they love. She is a wounded healer, someone who has walked the path of healing her own wounds and embracing her shadows. Her journey has led her from survival to functioning to thriving, and she wants to help you find that same path for yourself. Liz believes that we all have darkness within us, and that it is not something to be feared but embraced. Her work is about helping you to move through your darkness find the strength and compassion within yourself, and emerge into the light. She's a stable, accepting, and genuine guide who will walk with you every step of the way. Liz is passionate about helping others heal and thrive through the use of psychedelics and mind-body practices. Liz's credentials include a Master's of Science in Mental Health Counseling, Yoga Teacher Certification, and Reiki Master Certification. She has also completed a PsyD and yoga therapy certification. She has lived abroad for over nine years, working as an international school counselor and a coach and therapist for international professionals. Let's meet Liz Schuler. Hi, Liz. It's so great to have you on the podcast today. I've been looking forward to getting to chat with you because psychedelic integration is such a fascinating topic for today. And honestly, it'll be the first time that we are talking about this on the podcast. So I am really excited to dive in. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Petra. I'm really excited to be the first person to talk about this with you. Yeah, you know what, I think it's a topic that's becoming more and more relevant. As we talk about different things in life, we talk about stress, mental health, personal growth, development, all of those things. And so I think it was high time (laughs) that we did an episode on it. (laughs) So for starters, would you like to share a little bit about yourself and your own story and maybe let us know what you do and how you came to do that? Yeah, So I am originally from the United States, but I have not lived in the United States for about 10 years now. I got my degree in mental health counseling. I started in a private practice. I got my yoga certification. I was doing a lot of holistic healing stuff. And then my partner got a job in Jordan brewing beer. And so we moved to Jordan, (laughs) which brewing beer in a Middle Eastern country is an interesting story in and of itself. But There I ended up working in international schools as a counselor and realized that counseling and the medical model is something that really goes against everything that I feel is healing. And I went back during COVID. We were actually in China at that point during COVID and got my PsyD, so my doctorate in clinical psychology, 
And going through all of the classes in mind-body healing and things like yoga therapy, all of this really reignited in me that idea that healing is far more holistic than just the mind or just the body or just relationships or just the environment. And in a lot of medicine and healing, we like separate those out into different specialties and things. And we never really come together with that. And I came across psychedelics, which has been, my dad's a hippie. I knew all about LSD and psilocybin and mushrooms growing up, but I had never had any experiences myself. So I dived into researching psychedelic assisted therapy, and that's what I did my thesis on. And realizing that it's a holistic healing method that not only takes you into the mind, the body, relationships, the environment, but also takes you into the spiritual realm in a very real, like embodied, almost like you're in a different dimension sort of sense. That was really interesting to me. And so that's when I decided that that's where I was headed. That's where I needed to be. And that's where I could help the most people is helping them to go into an experience ready to get the benefits out of it and not having adverse experiences or being able to deal with those properly and then coming out of it and making sure that they keep those changes and that they have lasting change so that they don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again. That sounds really fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. And, yes, your dad is a hippie. I I love that. You know, I do know a lot of people that are my parents' generation that have had their fair share of experiences. And when they talk about those experiences, I always think to myself, wow, this must have impacted them on such a profound level to, yeah. to feel and see and hear all these things. So, yeah, it sounds like a really great addition to a holistic healing journey that can maybe support, complement, and whatever else it is that we're doing. So when you say you psychedelic integration, I mean, what does that look like on a client level? So if someone comes to you and says, I would like help with this, what do you usually do for them or, or with them? How do you work with them? So it depends on if they've already had the experience or if they're ready to do the experience and they need help. So I really love helping people prepare for the experience because I think it makes the after integration easier and you know more comprehensive, a lot more effective. So the before, we really focus on what's called set and setting. So set is your mindset. Setting is the environment that you are having the experience in or you're tripping in. And it seems really simple. <laughs> But there's a lot that goes into that. So there are a lot of different ways and a different, like every person is different, right? So you're going to have a different environment that you want. Do you want to have a couch with a bunch of, you know, blankets and pillows? Or do you want to be out in nature in a place where you can see the trees and the stars, right? Day or night. It depends on what makes you feel safest. And that's really what we're going for is trying to get your set and your setting to a place where you feel safe, where you feel comfortable enough that if something comes up that isn't safe, there's nothing around you that isn't safe. It's just the stuff that's coming up for you. So you have a safe container, you have safe people around you to make sure that you can move through that in a way that's beneficial rather than traumatizing. And then after the experience, we take all of those things that happened and we process them and we hopefully turn them into meaning and insight. And then we take those meanings and those insights and turn them into real world change. So for a lot of people, that means changing how they relate to other people in their world could mean changing things like their job. It could mean just putting in different boundaries at their job. There are a lot of different things that can happen, but the way that we get there and the way that we process that is usually through things like yoga and breath work, journaling, things like shadow work. A lot of times things will come up in a trip that are aspects of ourselves that we're afraid of or that we want to you know, get rid of and really accepting those and learning how to be with those and integrate those into your being is a huge part of what we do afterwards to make sure that we're not throwing away some of those benefits and running away from the things that we really need to work on. So it sounds like people choose to have these journeys, possibly out of a sense of wanting more personal discovery or, or a sense of personal growth and insight. And 
What are some other reasons that someone might choose to go on a psychedelic journey? Are there some things that you have noted while working with clients, things that you have kind of said, okay, I noticed this sort of over and over. What are some of the reasons why someone might choose this? I think a lot of people, I mean, it, it's becoming really mainstream for mental health therapy, right? So things like depression, anxiety, and that's great for people who want to go through, you know, mental health treatment. That's not what I do anymore because I'm not really focused on the medical model anymore. It is helpful. The research does show that it's helpful. So if you want to go through that and work with a therapist who does this, that's great. But most of my clients come to me because they want more productivity. It's what they think they want. It's not usually what comes out on the other side for them, but that's kind of what they're coming to me for. They feel stuck. They feel stressed. They feel like there's something missing and they can't quite figure out what that is, right? They have a good job. They've got, you know, kids or a wife or a good family situation. They feel comfortable, but there's just some, there's that nagging something in, in their heart or in the back of their head. And a lot of times it's professionals, people who feel like they want to get to that next level. And that's why they come to me. But what really ends up happening is there's that, that piece of themselves that they haven't accepted or that trauma that they've experienced that they really haven't dealt with. And that comes up during the experience and we integrate that afterwards and they're able to feel more complete and more whole and more confident. And they are probably more productive, but that's not really the big takeaway. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. that, But it often goes like that. We have expectations mm -hmm. for certain things and then they do turn out quite differently and very often actually in a way that benefits us a lot more than we had initially anticipated. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And what can we imagine what a journey like that would look like? Because you generally, you said you might come before or after. So do you also assist people as they're going on these journeys or is your job sort of around that journey then? Most of my work is around the journey because in a lot of countries, including Belgium, where I'm at, it's illegal to possess and take those substances. And in my business plan, I do have that I am a psychedelic integration coach. And so being caught with something like that, I'm an immigrant. It's a lot of legal stuff. However, in the Netherlands and in other places where it's legal, I have worked with retreat centers to facilitate and be part of ceremonies just so that I have that knowledge and I have that experience so I know what people are going through when they go through it. But it's not a service that I necessarily provide. I do every once in a while provide legal psychedelic experiences. So this is stuff like Kana or Blue Lotus that are not going to give you like the big hallucinations out into space like psilocybin or DMT will, but they are going to open up your consciousness in a milder, more subtle way. And I, I do facilitate those experiences. I can do that online because they're very, very safe and there's very few adverse experiences, or I can do it here. I've got a, like, a nice nature trail where we do walk and talk and they're not super long experiences. So with things like DMT, LSD, psilocybin, I don't I don't normally facilitate, but yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting, especially because we we have to be aware, of course, of the legalities of all of that as well, while recognizing that it could be a great holistic addition to what we possibly might be looking for. So that's a really great insight that you're giving us there. Now, you've mentioned several other things that go into the integration after these experiences, one being yoga, for example. So I've never actually thought of the fact that so someone goes on the psychedelic journey and then they go do some yoga or something. It's like going to caught me off guard a little bit. Do you want to talk about what that looks like for someone who has an experience like that? And, and how do you use these other modalities then to help them integrate what they have experienced? Right. So yoga and breath work. So yoga, a lot of people think of yoga as just the postures, right? Just the asana. That's really, really powerful because of the way that it uses your body. But yoga is also about breath work, which is pranayama. Yoga is also about meditation. There are a lot of different parts of yoga. And I try and bring in as many of those aspects as possible to create a, a more, like I said, holistic version that is actual yoga from 
you know, the philosophy and the science rather than just the exercise. What we know is that if you bring all of those bits of yoga together, it is one of the most effective trauma treatments that we have anywhere. <laughs> There's been so much research that shows that having that combination of using your breath, being mindful, using your body and moving your body in very intentional ways helps release trauma that is at a cellular level. And when I was doing yoga and, and teaching yoga, I was noticing a lot of people would just burst into tears in class. Right? And it's it happens at every studio I've ever been to. It's, you know, And it's just because when you get into that place where you are present and you are with yourself and you're not thinking about thing that has to happen in two hours, you're not thinking about the things that happened two years ago, you're just here in the moment, your brain does this really weird thing where there isn't there isn't the prefrontal cortex. You're not processing anything. You're not analyzing anything. You're in the back of your brain, which is where all of the memories, all of the emotions, all of the body sensations come in. And you unlock that and the amygdala calms down. So there's no stress. There's, there's no fight or flight. And all of a sudden you're in a safe place for whatever that is that needs to come out to come out. And so being able to do that after a psychedelic experience where hopefully you felt safe during the experience, you had a safe set and setting and stuff came up, we can use yoga, we can use breath work to come into those again in a safe way, but in a very logical way. We can come into that, we can have that experience, and then afterwards we can say, okay, so what just happened there for you? So we can connect that physical emotional part with the logical part. And it creates this integration of all bits of ourselves that we can talk about it in a safe, supportive way. So I find yoga magical. Yeah, absolutely. By the sounds of it, that also helps people process a lot of what they've experienced previously as far as trauma and stress goes. So, and what kind of changes do you see afterwards? So you said some people come for productivity or this or that, they have these expectations, but what do you actually see when you help someone integrate these journeys? What changes in them or what changes in their lives? So the great thing about psychedelics, so I talk about how magical yoga is. The thing about yoga is it can change your life in a very similar way to psychedelics, but it just takes a long time, right? I've been doing yoga probably for 20 years now. And it's given me a whole lot of healing. But when I do something like psilocybin or blue lotus, it catapults me. It's almost like 10 years of yoga in one moment because it's opening your brain. It's giving you new neurons. It's creating different pathways in your brain. It's doing a lot of cool things. And so it's it's almost like, I think I've, I've got a friend who says it's like 10 years of therapy <laughs> in four hours. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't, you know, make those connections permanent. It's open for that trip and it's open for maybe three, I think they might be saying now up to six weeks. I'm not sure. I would say three weeks is probably where I would cut it off. You have that openness to start to change. And so that openness is almost like, if you think back to when you were a teenager and you always wanted to go on adventures and you wanted to try new things and you weren't super worried about mortgages right? <laughs> or what the long-term effect was. You were trying to figure out who you were and you were doing that through experimenting and engaging with people and engaging with the world. And psilocybin and other hallucinogenics, psychedelics do that for you. They take you back to that time. So it helps you become more open-minded it helps you become a lot more adventurous. People who, you know, were like, all I do is sit at home and watch TV. They all of a sudden are like, I'm going to go travel and I'm going to go, you know, kayaking and, you know, whatever, whatever it is that's, that's going to make them more happy. And they feel more confident and their self-worth and self-acceptance just tends to skyrocket, especially if they do really good integration, right? The self-acceptance like and, and the, the self-worth, 
that's something that you need to work on afterwards to make it stick. The adventurousness and the openness can kind of stick around a lot longer. But if you really do the integration work, there are those parts of yourself that you rejected and that you felt were not good enough. And those parts of yourself become okay and become maybe even an asset in some cases. And and it frees you to be who you are in a way that you weren't before. Sounds like a lot of good experiences come out of that and actually open you up to the world a little bit yeah. more than you may have been before. Is there a risk of, of addiction with this? Is there a risk that you see with with things like that happening or people saying, well, now I need this all the time because I need this feeling? Or is that a completely different experience? So you can become psychologically addicted to psychedelics. There are very few psychedelics that you can become physically addicted to. So physically dependent on, as in like heroin, where you have withdrawal symptoms and you have to have it or you feel like crap, right? With psychedelics, that doesn't happen. Maybe with something like ketamine, there's a little bit more of a risk. But with psilocybin, with LSD, no risk of physical dependency. Psychological dependency, I think there's a very low risk. The research says that it's basically non-existent. The thing that I have seen that is the big risk is people going to ceremony or retreats because they're looking for a specific thing and they're not getting it out of, out of the drug, out of the substance, out of the plant, whatever it is that they're taking. And when I work with people like that, we work on that intention because when we have a goal, a lot of times it's pretty narrow. And when we're working with things like psilocybin and LSD, what we're actually doing is we're widening and opening everything up. So when we stay this narrow with a goal or an intention, we're leaving out so many possibilities that are out there. And when we open up that intention and widen it up so that they are able to experience whatever might come that is going to help them with that intention, that makes things a lot better. So for example, I, I know a lot of people come in with a goal like, I need a different job, right? <laughs> I need to change my job. And instead of thinking about, okay, this is the outcome that I need, we think about how do you want to feel at the end of this? What is it in your body that you want to feel? How do you want your environment to feel? And instead of just having that one option, that opens things up so that you can have some sort of solution, some sort of change that may not be changing your job, but will be better in the long run than changing your job. So there's, there's when people have that really, really narrow focus, I think they don't get out of it what they want. And so then they go back and then they go back. And it's not necessarily a bad thing that they do that. It's more just that they're going to be spending a lot of money. They're going to be getting really frustrated and they're probably more at risk for adverse experiences, probably because they're going to be doing more higher and higher doses. And you don't always need a higher dose to get what you want. That's really interesting that you, how do you explain that? So yeah, that, that makes sense that we, again, we're expecting something. We we want something out of an experience that we're expecting. So moderating that and understanding maybe why we need that or what it is that we're looking for might help on that fulfillment part, the purpose part. So yeah, but that sounds like a lot of other things in life too, when we are creating different experiences, because <laughs> yes. we really are looking for something deeper. So yeah. Now, is this sort of a once in a lifetime experience? Or can people use this sort of like a therapy so that we do this twice a year or every few months? Or how do you approach that? Yeah, everybody has a different relationship with it. So I know that there are some people who, you know, will take it once every three, four or five years, right? Some people will do twice a year, quarterly. <laughs> and of course, it also depends on your substance. So for example, for something like Kana, which is actually a, a South African plant that they're calling nature's MDMA. It helps you with a little bit of euphoria, stress relief, could be a little bit of an aphrodisiac, but it helps with empathy as well. 
you can take that every day if you want to, if that's what's helpful for you. A lot of people use it. Like my partner right now is in a really difficult program for his his second bachelor's and he takes it twice a week when he's having really stressful weeks and it really helps him calm down that stress, be present in his classes and do what he needs to do. So with something more like Kana that's more subtle, that's more mild, usually you can do it more often. Most people do it more often. With something like psilocybin, where you're going to be doing four to six hours of, you know, you can't drive a car, you can't go to work, you know, you have to, you have to be in your place and be with a safe person. That's going to be a lot less often that you can take that just logistically, honestly. But again, everybody has their own relationship with the plant and what they need. I would say it's probably best if at the very beginning you are doing it less often just to make sure that you are getting the integration that you need before you go back and you know so you don't get that frustration and that that tunnel vision. Yeah, good point. I am wondering because you talked about also being part of some of the retreats, is is there a difference in what we can expect or what we experience in say a group versus doing this just as an individual? Of course, you did mention having a a person there to keep you safe, but you know, versus like an entire group kind of having this experience or just you yourself having that experience, what are some of the benefits, maybe pros and cons of either or, and then how do they differ? Yeah. So group integration and and group retreats are really great because of the energy that it creates. I think it's kind of like the difference between doing yoga at home versus doing yoga in a studio. When you go to the studio, there's this energy there's, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but there's like a presence and it helps you drop in a little bit deeper. And that can be true with retreats as well. There's a lot of energy. You can do things like yoga during the retreat. There there are other activities that you can do in between sessions. So for a lot of the retreats in the Netherlands right now, they're doing three-day retreats. So that's two dosing sessions, two trips usually. And then in between those trips, there are other activities like yoga or breath work or, you know, things that you can do to help work through some of that integration. And that's really great. It can also help with, you know, exchanging experiences and and starting to process and make meaning. I think when it comes to group integration, it can be helpful to a point because when you're doing a group with integration, everybody's going to have different experiences and very different needs. And it's really helpful to be able to talk about that in a space where other people understand what you're talking about and maybe have some similar experiences. But when it gets down to those really individual needs, I think it's important to do a sort of a one-on-one with somebody so you can really drill down into it because it's hard to do in, in a group session. It's hard to get to everyone in depth the way that you need to. I think if you had an, a retreat that was maybe like a week long and you had five participants, you might be able to get that done in a different way. But most retreats, just to be cost effective and, and accessible to people, are going to be like three days. What do you recommend for beginners? Should they start off in a group or or should they start off on their own? I would suggest for anybody who feels nervous about it or who feels like... <laughs> You know, I'm a rule follower. I've always been a rule follower, which is why even when my dad was like, oh, yeah, I've done LSD. I've done so here's what it's like. I was like, oh, but it's illegal. Right. (laughs) So for anybody who's feeling like that, it's probably best to do it in a group setting with, you know, that very specific container around you where you've got all of these multidisciplinary people that can help you through it. If you are a person who's really super adventurous and you have no worries, you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be great. I would say that it's perfectly fine to be able to do it as a one-on-one, but you always, especially if it's your first time or even your second time, always, always, always have somebody who is there who can help keep you safe, who can do things for you, like help you get to the bathroom if you you need to, because sometimes you get a little wobbly, right? And who can, you know, call for help if needed. So again, adverse experiences, very, very rare, but always important to keep safety first. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. And 
I'm curious now, obviously, after we have chatted about this, and I'm sure some of our listeners are very curious as well. So how can people work with you? What kind of programs and services do you offer? How can people get in touch? Yeah, so I am really, really active on LinkedIn. (laughs) That's where most of the people who work with me find me. You can work with me. I have right now a program that is preparation and integration. And it's a combined program. I help you prepare everything that you need for your your journey, your trip. And then afterwards, we have six integration sessions so that we make sure that you are going to get that lasting change and that you, you know, you're not focused too much on that one outcome. <laughs> and I also have a free breathwork guide if you want. That link should be in the description. And I also, I work on Insight Timer. I have a bunch of meditations and breathwork sessions there, and that's all free for anybody who wants to go there. So lots of different ways to find me. Amazing. And we will be linking to all of Liz's offerings in the show notes as well. So be sure to check there on how you can get a hold of her, how you can find her on some of the free things that she mentioned, or go on Insight Timer and connect with her there. And of course, if you are interested in working with her in and around your own journey, then be sure you contact her with what we have listed in the show notes. One of them, I'm guessing, being LinkedIn, as you mentioned. So we will put all of that information in there for you. And if you do you end up working with Liz or you end up having your own journey, let us know how that experience was for you. Let us know kind of what you went through how things changed in your life what you experienced I'm always curious to find out what this looks like in real life so reach out connect with us on Instagram let me know what your own experience looked like we definitely would love to hear from you well this has been another incredible episode and I really hope our listeners have enjoyed our journey into psychedelic integration as much as I have It has been so fantastic chatting with you the past half hour, Liz. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this wisdom and your insights with us. I'm sure that our audience has really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was amazing. Yeah, my pleasure. And, you know, I think that there will be a lot of advancements and developments, especially in this field as time goes by. So I have a feeling we'll be chatting again about this at some point. (laughs) I'd love to. Thanks, Liz. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen in. If you enjoy the Journey podcast, please support us by subscribing, sharing on social media and leaving us a review. We appreciate you. And you can find more of The Journey on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and our website, thejourney.com. Sending you love and courage and see you next time.